All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. It's about 103 Central Time in the afternoon here on this February 10th, and I hope that you are doing well. And uh, I'm doing well, other than some allergies. Been dealing with allergies all week, and uh, the, it was cold here, and then it got warmer. When I say warmer, I mean in, in the 60s, things started to bud outside, and uh, to some degree, and uh, anyway, my allergies just went crazy. You know what? Um, you, maybe you're in the same boat. And you know what that does? It just makes, I know for me personally, it makes me just look forward to, to heaven that much more because heaven is going to be congestion free. And so I'm thankful for that. Well, I want to encourage you today with, with, with the word of God and we want to pray uh, together. So go ahead and press the thumbs up button share this like this whether it's on facebook or or uh, youtube if you haven't done so already again subscribe to the corner ministries youtube channel well i want to talk today encourage you about the importance of our words and i'm going to start with hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20 and I, and if you have a prayer request go ahead and put it in the comment section uh good to see you yvonne and mark um Again, put in the comment section. Love to see where you're watching from. Again, whether this, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. And um, again, you can put a praise report in there as well. If you don't have a uh, prayer request, I know everyone, uh, we all do. We have prayer needs. We're going to pray together uh, as we do uh, every week in just a minute. But I want to, again, encourage you from God's Word about the importance of our words. And I'm going to begin... In Hebrews chapter uh, 13, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15, where the writer of Hebrews says this, he says, Therefore by him, that is Jesus, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Let me, let me, let me read that again. Again, therefore, by him, that is Jesus, and what he's accomplished for us, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Now, Paul, who I believe wrote the book of Hebrews, what he's doing there is he's using a figure, figure of speech or uh, uh, agricultural analogy bringing out a spiritual truth, and he mentioned, he says here, therefore by Jesus, let us continually offer up the sacrifice of praise to God. Now st stop right there. The, that means that our worship to the Lord, our, our, our giving thanks, and it's not just in church, but it's everywhere. When you're in your room, when you're in your car, or no matter where you are, if you're all, all by yourself, or if you're in a in a church together, gathering with other believers, worshiping God, regardless of where you are, that get this, your praise is considered by God as a sacrifice. Now, now get this, it's, it's through Christ, it's through the sacrifice of Jesus that we offer the sacrifice of praise. Can I say that again? Again, it's through the sacrifice of Jesus that we offer to God the sacrifice of praise. God views it as a sacrifice. Because you and I are to be, as Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, we're to be a living sacrifice. And, and so that is our rightful place, a rightful condition, because we're in Christ and Jesus was the ultimate living sacrifice. But he mentions here, again, let us offer to God the sacrifice of praise. Again, then, then he says, that is the fruit of our lips. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And he, he uses that term, the fruit of our lips. That's our praise. Our praise is like, is it, it's sacrifice. But it's also, he says, it's the fruit of our lips. Okay, so that is such a powerful statement. Now, if there is fruit, there has to be a root. Again, there's an agricultural term. It's a tree. It's a fruit tree. If there is fruit, there has to be a root. So if the fruit of our lips 
is praise and giving glory to God. And again, that's not, I should say, that's not just in church or it's not just the words, you know, thank you, Jesus, even though that is that is it, of course. But it is, it's everything that we say. Everything that we say is to be a sacrifice of praise. It is the fruit of our lips. Now, again, as I mentioned, if there, if, if, if praise is the fruit of our lips, then that means there is a root of praise in our heart. And, and so um, I want to, again, I want to encourage you with this today, that what we, what we say, how we, our words that we say are very, very important. You know, when, when I read there Hebrews chapter 13, of course, we automatically go to, you know, worship and praise to God. He, he even says it, giving thanks to his name. And that is correct. That is right, of course. But I want to encourage you with this as well, that, you know, our, our, how we verbalize, what we say, how we interact with God, and how we interact with other people, God takes notice of it. God takes notice of it. Our, our words are very important. Uh, in, in Hebrews, I'm sorry, in, in, in James chapter 3, in James chapter 3, verse 3 through 5, or really that whole passage, the Holy Spirit through James would tell us that our words, our tongue, is like the bit in a horse's mouth, and it's like the rudder on a ship. It's the small. It's one of the smallest members of our body, but yet it steers our whole life. It steers the direction of our life. Now, when I talk about the importance of our words. Um, what can happen, I know this because I, I've done this myself, what can happen is this, is, and this is very true of the world that, <clears throat> that I'm in. Um, when I say the world that I'm in, I mean the, <laughs> the, 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 the circle of friends in a sense that I have, okay, in my former life and then now. In that world, you mentioned the importance of words and, and often the recipient, maybe you today, maybe it's you, automatically puts up, puts up reservations, puts up walls. Like, oh, 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 he's, he's talking about words. He's talking about the importance of words. Oh, that's the word of faith movement. They, that's what they do. But I want to challenge you and encourage you today. But today, I'm not talking about the Word of Faith movement. I'm, I'm talking about God's Word. And what God says about our words is very, very important. Forget about Word of Faith. Forget about that. Forget about what preacher so-and-so said. Like, pay attention to what God said. And what's, you know, what's interesting is that Jesus himself, whom we are to offer our sacrifice of praise through, okay, through him, through Jesus, through the sacrifice of Christ. You know who he is? He is the word of God. He, that the word logos is the, it's the expression, the verbal expression of our thoughts and our mindset and the intentions of our heart. Again, it's the verbal expression of our heart. That's who Jesus is. He is the expression of, of God's heart for humanity. And he is the word. That's, a, that's, that's who he is. That's a title of it, the word. That's how important words are to God. That he would, he would name his son Jesus the word. <laughs> and again, in James chapter 3, he lets us know that the whole direction of our life can be is steered by our words, good or bad. Now, James, in that situation, James chapter 3, he was actually correcting them and instructing them because they he, he rebuked them. He said, because with your one tongue, you are blessing God and you're cursing men. He said, these things ought not to be. It's not fitting for a child of God to bless, to with our same mouth, bless God and curse men. The idea of curse doesn't mean hocus pocus. 
that kind of witch kind of curse. No, it's more so it's slander. It's belittling. It's saying something about another person that God does not say. That's cursing other people. Let me say it again. It's saying something negative about them that God does not say. We are, what our words should be is a reflection of God's word, of God's intention and God's heart towards people. That's why it's so important, important that we have his word inside of us. Like David said in Psalm 119, he said, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so our words should be a reflection of God's word. And, and what do you mean by our word? I, that means in every situation, and I'm preaching to myself, that means with it, for myself, I'll, I'll use myself as an example, that means my interaction with my wife should be, a, my words should be a reflection of God's word. My, my interaction with my children should be a reflection of God's word to them. I know that sets a high standard. I know that, that seen, when I say that, 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 that can come across as if, oh, no, that, that's impossible. That's, a, that's too high of a standard. No, that's not, that's not reasonable. But listen to what God says to us as well about, and I'm, I, well, I chase a rabbit for a moment, dealing with a high standard. God said, be ye holy as I am holy. God said that. Peter quoted that. Jesus said that. Be holy as I am holy. Again, God's just, that's a high standard. He said, trust the Lord with all of your heart. That's a high standard. You mean all of my heart? Yes, that's a high standard. But God will never tell us to do something that he hasn't given us the grace to be able to do it. And that includes how we talk. I want to read another passage, because I could go on and on about this. Um, I want to read another passage out of Proverbs chapter 18, excuse me, <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 and 21. And this is one verse in here, uh, of course, people are familiar with that lo- death and life are, are in the power of the tongue, okay? But I want to read the verse before it because it's, it's n- most people, they, when they quote that, it's just life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's it. But know that there is context to that statement because whenever we, I mean, well, actually, let me just read it. Verse 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. There's that agricultural term again, the same term that Paul used in Hebrews chapter 13, the fruit of our lips. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now when we say that, we read that, I should say, we automatically normally think of how it affects other people. That our words, as James brought out, we can bless God and we can curse men. Well, we can also bless men and curse men. We can, through our words, we can bring destruction to other people and we can bring encouragement and life to other people. Okay, we normally think of it in that way and that is correct. Our words are that important. Well, I'm going to read verse 20. He said, a man, this is Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 and 21 now. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Stop right there. Again, a man's stomach, that's the stomach is refers to our innermost being, okay, our heart, our again, our innermost being. A man's stomach shall be satisfied with the from the fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips. He shall be filled. Then he says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So again, in verse 20, the, the, the implication of our words are, is more personal. Again, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his, his mouth 
from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled or he shall be satisfied. And so, so get this, that how we talk, if our words are constantly negative, if our words are constantly negative or pessimistic or the cup is always half empty and you're just, you know, and maybe it's something, maybe it's things that we, ought, we think that we have a right to say. That's often where we get into, we, that's often where we get into problems. I have a right to say it. I'm right. And, and I'm talking about negative now negative and i've got a right to say it and, and it can be about it maybe it's someone you don't like maybe it's maybe it's um maybe it's politics <clears throat> oh this is a big one and in 2024 this is going to be a big one how we talk okay and politics this election year uh but you know we, we you know we don't you don't maybe you don't like president biden and 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 you just rip into president biden and uh, I'm, again, I'm, by that, I'm not, I'm not approving or disapproving. I'm just talking about the factual side of it, that we rip, rip into him, or you don't like former President Trump, and you just rip into him like he rips into everybody. Uh, politicians, they rip into each other. So we become a politician at home, and we're just ripping into people. We're ripping into Biden. We're ripping into Trump. We are just, I mean, destroying them. Get that? That's coming out. That's the fruit of our lips because there is a root of that in our heart. Now, my point is this. Sometimes we can be that way and think, well, I've got a right because that's what they are. They're a jerk. They're a, they're, they're a loser. They're, a, they're, they're this or they're that. So I've got a right to say that. Can I tell you this? As a child of God, there are certain rights that we lose when we accept, when we follow Jesus. There are certain things that we lay aside, as it's said so often, in, in, especially in the New Testament. We lay aside all evil speaking. We lay aside all of that which tears down. Now, again, that, that I want you to understand, I'm not saying that we don't speak truth and, and truth can be negative as it concerns people okay so be, please don't take them the wrong way but i'm talking about just going on and on and on and on our words direct the course of our life even the words that we say in private and and in verse 20 of proverbs chapter 18 again our stomach shall be our innermost being shall be satisfied with the fruit of our mouth can i ask you this today is what's coming out of your mouth, does it satisfy you? Is the produce of your lips, does it cause you to be filled with good, okay, with the goodness of God? I'm going to stop right there and say it again. Uh, let me look over here. Um, again, does, does what you say, the words that you say, does this satisfy? Does it bring? Does this satisfy your innermost being? Does it fill your heart again with the goodness of God? Does it fill your heart with grace? Yes, your words, not somebody else's words, not my words or somebody else, a preacher, your favorite preacher on television, not their words, your words. Do your words? Do they? Do they satisfy you with the grace of God, with the goodness of God, with the victory of Jesus? Does it bring satisfaction? Well, if it doesn't, then we ought not to be saying it. Or at least it ought not to be what's prevalent on our lips. Again, there's times for, hard, for, for, for having a hard word. But get this, those are not 24 7 those are not most times most times in our life this is what we need and this is what other people need they need encouragement and sometimes the encouragement that we give actually can be a rebuke what i'm saying today could be a rebuke today to you and it can be encouragement all at the same time 
So from the fruit of the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. So with the words that you're saying, does it give, it, is it, does it bring satisfaction? I mean, from the, I mean, the goodness of God, I mean, satisfaction from the goodness of God. I don't mean satisfaction because you, you're satisfied because you just ripped into somebody and you just tore into them with your words and now you feel good about it. I'm not talking about that satisfaction, even though that verse, it could imply that. But that's a wrong type of satisfaction. Oh, I just, I just told somebody, I just gave them a piece of my mind. Yeah, I feel good about it. Get, that's, that is in there, but that's, that's giving death to people. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it shall eat of its fruit. So if you love death and you speak death, then you will you'll love the fruit of it, which is death. If you love life, you will speak life and you will love the fruit of your lips, which is life. Does that make sense? You know, Jesus said it this way. He said it a little bit differently. He said in, Pro, I'm sorry, he said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, a verse that most people don't hear about, and it's this. He said, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, he said that every one of us, that we are going to give an account unto God for every idle word that we say. That's what he said. Matthew 12, verse 36. You can look it up. Any translation. We shall give an account to God for every idle word that we say. And the word idle there uh, in the King James, it, can, it means... And other translations bring it out a little bit better, but it, it referred not idle word. It speaks of like casual words. It speaks of words that are not premeditated. You know, premeditated words we can say anything. That's good, okay. Premeditated, but idle words in Matthew twelve uh, thirty six are are words that are not premeditated. They're not thought out beforehand. In other words, they just naturally flow from the well being your own spirit. They just kind of, they're the, and they just, you like the talk that you would have when you're with close friends and, and you can trust that nobody else is going to say nothing, okay? You're going to give an account. We're, we, we're going to give an account for every idle word that we say. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 12, 36. Well, some would say, no, 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 well, I'm covered by the blood. It doesn't matter. That doesn't, ma that is, that doesn't apply to me. So with that thinking, because the blood of Jesus is applied to you, so that means you can say anything you want to. No, we can't. We're not supposed to as a child of God. It's not fitting. Because we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, that much the more we should be speaking life. Again, our words should be a reflection of God's word. Jesus, again, <laughs> is the word. That's how important, again, God puts priority upon our words. And so, again, I just want to encourage you and challenge you at the same time with that. Um, let let and, and going back to Hebrews uh, chapter uh, thirteen and verse fifteen. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. Again, if there's a fruit of praise, that means there's a root of praise in our heart. And if there's if there's a fruit of death, okay, in our words. That means there's a root of death. If there is a fruit of unforgiveness, there's a root of unforgiveness. If there's a fruit of encouragement, that means there's a root of encouragement. Whatever the fruit is, there is a root in our heart. And our words, in general, they tell what's in our heart. Not always. But in general, most of the time, yes. Why do I say that? Because Jesus said about the Pharisees, he said that with their words, they honor me, but their heart is far from me. You see, we can use our words premeditated to mask the condition of our heart, but God sees through it all. But in general, okay, in general, our words are a reflection of what's in our heart. Whatever the fruit is, 
there is a root there. So I encourage you, listen, listen. And I, and I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forgive me. I'm gonna I'm gonna read something else here. In Proverbs chapter 18, because this goes right along with it. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 19, he said, "A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle." And then he goes into again our words. Again, a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, than a fortress. A, a brother in the Lord who is offended, we've offended them, or they, they're, somehow they got offended. Maybe it's, uh, they got offended. The Lord, the Holy Spirit through Solomon said, that individual is harder to win, harder to win back than a fortress. And contentions with a brother are like the bars of a castle. Get that? That's why, boy, it's so important. I, I'm, I'm veering off a little bit. That's why it's so important that we are at peace with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. If there is conflict with a brother or sister in the Lord, can I encourage you, make it right. I mean, you know... You don't have to go into a long, you know, dissertation with them. Even if it's just praying for them, even even if it's just your spirit, okay? But as the scripture says, a soft answer turns away wrath. Again, a soft answer, that's our word, turns away wrath. It turns away contention. So let what we say bring peace to people. Let what we say put out, let, the, let our words put out contention. Let our words, again, be a reflection of God's word. And God's word doesn't stir up contention in an un, fleshly now, fleshly contention, okay? It, 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 puts a, it puts water on fleshly contention. And there's too much contention today between God's people. We're to love one another. And Jesus said this. He said, by your love will all men know that you are my disciples. And he didn't say, you know, a lot of, he didn't say by your preaching. That's, that's important. He didn't say by your teaching. He said, by your love for one another will all men know that you are my disciples. In other words, by the love that we have for one another. And that love covers a multitude of sins the world will know that we have something real. And that real is Jesus. That real is God. And so I'm going to close there today. And um, that's right, Barbara. Let our words build up, people. That's life. And uh, again, I want to read to you Proverbs 18, verse 20. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, but from the produce of his lips he shall be filled. So are what you saying, does it bring our words Again, even in interaction with other people, does it bring the satisfaction of God's goodness? Or does it bring the satisfaction of our own flesh? Yeah, I got them. Yeah, I told them the way. Yeah, I, I ripped into them. That brings a satisfaction, but it's a fleshly satisfaction. Does it, but our words, does it bring the satisfaction of the goodness of God? That's what it should be. So, I'm going to pray. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to pray. We're going to pray for the physical needs today. And um, uh, good to see you, Lynette. Elias, I oh, always love you, my brother. Steve, good to see you. Cindy, Sheila, Barbara, Lynette. I see Tammy on there. Uh, all right. I'm going to pray. And we're gonna, let's pray together. And I don't see any... Uh, I don't... Forgive me for looking here. I don't... Uh, Cindy, okay. Uh, okay, we're going to pray for Cindy, the kidney, kidneys. And uh, all right. Well, let's pray for the physical needs. If I look, if my eyes look tired today, it's because it's my allergies. <laughs> so pray for me with that. Hey, Isaiah, good to see you on there. All right. Um, but uh, let's pray and just believe the Lord for physical healing. If you need a physical touch in your body, we can ask the Lord right now. We're going to ask the Lord right now for physical healing. And you can believe the Lord for healing in your physical body. By his stripes we are healed. Let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we just believe you. We thank you, Lord, for the blood 
of your son Jesus. For you said that by your stripes we are healed. That our healing is not in our shout. Our healing is not in our quietness. Our healing is not in our self. We just ask and believe and know that by your stripes we are healed. And we receive it right now from head to toe in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your healing virtue flow, Lord. Lord, as they prayed, the, the apostles prayed in Acts 4. God, we ask you to reach down your hand from heaven, Jesus. Reach down your hand from heaven, Lord Jesus, and bring healing to those who need it. Lord, heal Cindy right now with that kidney problem. Lord, let your kidneys be healed. Father, I lift up Eugene. I pray for the same for him, that you would touch his kidneys. Bring healing to him. Bring healing to Jerry's leg, oh God, other parts of his body. Lord, I pray for Nancy. Lord, I pray for uh, Glenn. Lord, I pray for others, Lord, that I know of. Lord, I pray for healing for that, even myself, healing from the, the allergies, Lord. And we pray for healing from sinus problems in the name of Jesus, digestive problems. Lord, every disease of the body, we take authority over it in the name of Jesus and let healing virtue flow. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are our healer in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we take authority right now over cancer. We take authority over migraine headaches, over skin disease, over other ailments of the body. In the name of Jesus, let healing virtue flow. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray now for just spiritual revelation. Uh, like Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, that the eyes of our understanding would be open to see the benefits of what Jesus accomplished for us at the cross. See, it's not really, uh, it's, a, it's not a pro, it's, our problem is not that, you know, well, did it happen or didn't happen? No, it happened. Our problem is that we don't see it in our, through our spiritual eyes of understanding. So I want to pray that today for our eyes, spiritual eyes, to be open even more to see Jesus, to behold the the beauty and the perfection of Jesus, and to see his victory, that we would see it in such a way that we, be, we would be like Elisha's servant when Elisha prayed, Lord, I pray, open his eyes. And he looked out, and he looked out, and instead of seeing the armies of Syria, we saw the armies of Syria, but he saw the angelic army all around, all around Elisha and him. Let our eyes be open. I want to pray that. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I ask that, Lord, you would give us eyes to see, spiritual eyes to see. We ask you, Lord, right now for revelation knowledge of the cross, of you, Jesus, of your word, of, every, of the importance of our words. Lord, help us, we pray. Give us eyes to see and a heart to understand. Father, I ask that, Lord, you would help us. Help us to put you first. Help us, Lord, our priorities to be right. Lord, give us eyes to see your glory and your beauty. But Lord, when we see you, Jesus, when we see you in your word, that it would bring a change in our life, a change in our attitude, a change in our thinking, a change in our, in our heart, a change in our words, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us everything we need for life and godliness. Lord, give us eyes to see. I pray for revelation knowledge right now of the cross, of, what, of your word, of everything that you've given to us. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. I want to pray now for our country, and I want to pray now for uh, Israel as well. And um, let's pray. Father, right now we lift up the United States of America in this election year. And Lord, we just pray for our leaders as your word says. And Lord, we, we thank you for your word. your word. Your word, Father, is not Republican or Democrat or independent or liberal or conservative. conservative. You are God. Jesus, you are the King of kings. And we worship you. And as you said in your word to pray for our leaders in government, for you have assigned them, Lord. And Lord, we pray for our leaders. We pray more than anything that their eyes would be open to see you, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are not, you are not hindered or limited by a label a person puts upon themselves. 
And I pray, God, for our leaders that their eyes would be open to you more than ever before. We pray for wisdom for them. We pray that they would, they would support Israel. We pray that, Lord, justice would be right, that righteousness would reign in this country. We pray, Lord, I pray that you would expose every lie of the enemy, even in society, whether they realize it's from you or not, that, Lord, the, the, the exposing, that, Lord, they would realize the lies of Satan in regards to everything. I pray that, God, you'd expose and reveal lies for what they are. They are lies, and they're not the truth. And, Lord, let people's eyes be open to you, Jesus. And I pray, God, for a harvest of souls in the United States of America and around the world, that you would bring a harvest of souls, that you would raise up labors, even us, Lord. Lord, help us be a witness to people in our, in, in our world that we come in contact with. Lord, help us to be a witness to them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift up Israel right now. Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the protection of Israel. We pray for Israel to have victory in this current conflict right now. That Lord, the hostages, hostages would go free. Father, we pray as you did in times past to Israel's enemies. We pray confusion upon Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran and every other group that is against Israel regardless if they're Muslim or not, we pray, God, that you'd bring confusion among them, and especially, Lord, Hamas, that are holding them hostages. Lord, even bring physical weakness to their bodies that they would just give up in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, give Israel victory. And more than anything, God, we pray for Israel's protection and that their eyes would be open to you, Jesus, that you are their Messiah, you're the Lamb of God, you're their Savior, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for the finances. Father, right now, I pray for your people that you'd bless them, help them financially. Lord, with their employment or whether it's single income, I pray that, God, you would bless your people financially. For you are not limited, Lord. You're not limited by anything. And I pray that, God, you'd bless financially so that we can be a blessing to your work, so that we can be a blessing to others. Lord, we ask, I ask you, Father, for your financial blessing upon your people. Bless businesses. Lord, bless uh, employers, employees. Lord, bless I pray, and I pray that, God, you give grace, Lord, upon your people in the work that you've given to us. Give grace to deal with people, Lord, with, with conditions that we experience at work. I pray that you would pour out your grace in the name of Jesus. And I say it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Mm. I know some of you need that. You, need, you don't need a new job, but you just need grace with the job that you have. And praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to end there today. I've gone uh, long enough. But, um, uh, and so I pray that you've been blessed today. And uh, again, you can write down your uh, prayer requests there. Others will see it. And, um, or, your, or your testimony. Again, press the thumbs up button or the the love button on Facebook. Uh, thumbs up on YouTube. Subscribe to the Corner Ministries YouTube channel. And uh, so God bless you and have a wonderful day in Jesus.